Joining me now on set to talk more about Zelensky's barnstorming of the globe is former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Yovanovitch. She's also out with a paperback edition of her book, Lessons from the Edge, which includes uh, a brand new afterword because her book came out literally, I want to say it was the month that the war began. Yeah, several much, right? weeks after the war started. Yeah, and so um, you were able to, to take some time. I want to talk about that uh, in a few minutes, but let's start with what Zelensky is doing. This has yeah. been quite... You know, everything has been in person with this trip. Mm -hmm. The fact that he's so comfortable traveling the globe in person, when, when you wrote your book, and right there, we were, you, you wrote, you're after, we were worried about assassination squads. We didn't right. know if he was going to be able to stick. And now he's traveling the globe with no fear. Yeah, and obviously quite confident about leaving the country during a time of war and reaching out to international leaders. And, I mean, this is just diplomacy on steroids, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, meeting with absolutely everybody. Um, you ran down the list earlier in the segment, and um, soon he will, uh, he will be, or his deputies will be meeting with um, African leaders led by the South Africans. Right. Um, I think, you know, we can probably expect uh, some others as well. This feels, I mean, uh, you know, I don't want to be too lazy here, but it does feel Churchillian. This is Winston Churchill. I mean, he, you know, he may have a lot of problems once the war is over handling politics, because guess what? Domestic politics gets tricky in any country. But right now, there is that feeling that he is, he is this wartime leader that continues to have the confidence of people that were divided in this country about him before, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think he's, he's you know, the, the people of Ukraine support him. Um, you know, public opinion polling is uh, pretty clear on that. Right. Uh, and um, I think uh, given the force of his personality, his communication skills, and he's just right on the substance, right? right. I mean, as you said, you know, he, he uh, is requesting our assistance because it is important for Ukraine, um, but it's also important for the United States and for other countries. I mean, um, he told Congress back, uh, back in December when he was in the U.S. Uh, that this is, um, you know, uh, assisting Ukraine is not a charity. It's an investment in global security. And I think that's right. Uh, I was at the end of my segment there with Kristen where I was talking about sometimes in the, some of this theater becomes intentional in political and mm -hmm. domestic political talks. Right. How much of Biden having to say no at first is theatrical? Meaning you got to sort of, the Russia needs to see that, you know, we're not, you know, this isn't just us versus yeah, I, I mean, it's it's hard for me to know what's in anybody's head. Sure. <laughs> um, and I, I, I guess what I would say is that I think it's important uh, for um, the administration to tell the American people what the stakes are here mm -hmm. and to have that important conversation with the American people so that there is no question about the continued support uh, for, for Ukraine in this war. That's important mm -hmm. for us. Right. It's our national security. Um, and I think part of that would also be having a plan, uh, a military plan, a political plan, an economic plan for Ukraine to win. Um, and what does that mean that we and other countries need to do to support Ukraine? Uh, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves here, but when this war ends, Ukraine's going to need a lot more financial yeah. support. It's going to need a whole bunch of, and I, I've, we've already heard some chatter that seized Russian assets should be the first, right. first money that goes into Ukraine for the, for the rebuild. How concerned are you, though, that the globe, you know, it, when, when the war is over, they, they won't be so charitable? Well, I think um, I, I think it's going to be important to show success in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And you're definitely not getting ahead of yourself because um, Ukraine is not waiting. They are already um, providing funds to individuals whose houses or apartments were destroyed by, uh, by Russian attacks. So uh, rebuilding is, is um, already commencing in Ukraine. And, of course, we've all seen, you know, the brave uh, linemen. <laughs> Keeping the power fixing. going. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, 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 it's inspiring. Uh, next week, um, there's uh, not next week, next month, there's going to be a conference in London on reconstruction. So people are thinking about this, not only in Ukraine, but globally. And how do we do this? How do we do it in a smart way? Um, you know, uh, reconstructing Ukraine, but the Ukraine of the future, not the Ukraine of the past. What's your sense of who ends up having to, who is the best position to play mediator here? It's interesting. You have Erdogan that thinks he's going to end up being the mediator. You know, I think China is trying mm -hmm. to play some role here. Um, I, I don't think in a weird way the United States, which normally wants to play weird, probably the Russians aren't going to, you know, who do you think of these various entities? I know South Africa's president thinks that he could be one. Is there somebody that, that the West can feel comfortable with and Putin can feel comfortable with playing mediator when the time comes? I think that, um, and I think you're right to say when the time comes, because neither Russia We're nor Ukraine yet, right? 
is 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 ready for uh, comprehensive uh, peace negotiations. Um, but I, I think it's not going to be just one country playing that role because I think this is so big and there are so many elements to it. I think that it's probably going to be a number of countries that have to participate and participate, um, you know, in the aftermath. I, I ask about Erdogan because, uh, look, he, uh, he's got his own political issues. The America's got their own issues with him. Right. But that grain deal has held. It has held. Yeah. Um, you know, every couple months it is, you know, there's a crisis. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, um, and then it gets continued again. Yeah. Um, you, one of the things you write about in your afterword in your, in your, in your book is the concern you have that Europeans are going to, uh, push for talks so quickly that it gives the Russians, uh, it allows them to pocket some things before they actually have to negotiate. Now, you wrote this a few months ago. Mm -hmm. Given how the West is sort of hung in there, do you think, do you think that's still an issue you're concerned about? Um, I, I, I think, yeah, I think we need to be very careful, and certainly Ukrainians feel, uh, are, are concerned about this, that in, in our zeal to assist Ukraine and getting to peace and saving lives, right, that's a, a valid goal, right. um, that we will accept Russian assurances that, you know, it's all over. Mm -hmm. And if we just, um, you know, kind of uh, stop... Um, Stop, uh, stop for a ceasefire, uh, Russia wins because Russia has gained uh, illegally on uh, territory that it has seized. And that is a problem because Russia, if you look at what Putin has done over the years, if what he said, what he's right. written, um, he's going to come back for more when he's ready, when he's rebuilt the military and when he's ready. Um, I got to ask you this last question about the former president and what he said when he was asked, does he want Ukraine? You know, does he want yeah. Ukraine to win the war? And he, and he wouldn't take a side. Um, what would the consequences be for Ukraine if President Trump is back into office with that posture? Um, certainly, I, I think it would be disastrous for Ukraine because Ukraine, um, first and foremost, is um, you know still here a year and then several months later right. um, because of the people, because of the military, because of their will and their skills. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also because of <clears throat> a lot of Western assistance, particularly assistance from the United States. And, you know, I'm not hearing in uh, what the former president is saying any desire to continue that assistance. That he wants to just immediately stop the war almost at any cost, whatever. And the cost could come, it sounds like, at some sovereignty of Ukraine. Yeah. And um, I would say that it will have um, serious implications for uh, global security. Because if Russia gets to invade Ukraine and win mm -hmm. uh, and be rewarded, um, I think other countries are going to think, well, the West is not going to stand up for its allies. It's not going to stand up for its interests. It's not going to stand up for its values. We can do the same thing. Uh, Ambassador Yovanovitch, uh, I will not ask you what you think of the diplomat uh, and about ambassadors uh, being groomed to be vice president. That would have been a lot of fun. But your book is one of the gr great diplomatic memoirs that are Thank out you. there. So I, if you haven't read it, check it out. Pick it up. Lessons from the Edge. Nice to see you, Ambassador. Thank you very much. You got it. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.